And they decide, well, if I want to look like that person, I should follow them verbatim. Do not do this. It is absolutely ridiculous. Simon of the Bordejo here. Thank you for joining me as always. Going to move that slightly to my right, your left, I presume, because it is in the way. And I do appreciate you joining me for another video where today... We are going to get rid of some muscle building mistakes. And if you're a long-time viewer of this channel, maybe we've touched on some of these things before. But very kindly, over the weekend, I was in Cardiff for Clash at the Castle, the WWE show. People said they liked these videos. Even if it does remind them of things they'd forgotten, it keeps them on the straight and narrow when it comes to the Fitness Palace of Love, a.k.a. the gym. Because remember, if you're in the BLC, the big little club, doesn't matter if you're big, doesn't matter if you're little, you are in the fitness club. And you're allowed to go to the gym, and you're allowed to absolutely smash it. So stop being an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and here's 10 stupid things you need to stop doing. Number 10 is walk in before you can run. Now, you will see this a lot in many gyms when you do go there. If you're somewhat of a moderate lifter or you're no longer a novice, a brand new person, a rookie, will walk through the door and they will see the henchest of dudes or henchest of women just smashing the gym, absolutely killing it, being like, oh my gosh, look at my peaks and freaks. And they decide, well, if I want to look like that person, I should follow them verbatim. Do not do this. It is absolutely ridiculous. If you're a surgeon, you don't walk into medical class day one and go, oh, I'm going to do open heart surgery. That is not going to go well because you haven't been able to use your information that you're going to learn and then copy and paste that onto what you need to do. And it's the same with the gym. You've got to walk before you run. You've got to crawl and then you walk and then you can sprint and then you can do marathons whatever the hell you want to do but keep it basic when you first go to the gym and there's two reasons to do this one your body's not prepared for it if you don't and you're going to injure yourself but two you're not leaving yourself with anywhere to go i did this this is how i know all of these are from my own experiences but if you do go 100 miles per hour the first day that you're in the gym you soon find well i'm out of options now i've left nowhere else to go and i'm completely screwed it's like people a bit of a tangent but it's true people that jump on performance enhancing drugs when they're like 23 24 what are you doing there is no way you have got to your genetic limit by the time you're in your mid-20s so you're just wasting what you could be doing five six seven eight nine ten years down the line now i don't advocate for that anyway because i think it's more important that you protect your health but if you are adamant that you are going to do it just be patient you've got your entire life to get massive guns you don't need to get it all before you i don't know 12. And number nine is a simple one you're focusing on some areas and not others and i get this of course i do you focus on your bicep, you focus on your chest. These are the two muscle groups that people like to work the most because I suppose they are the aesthetically pleasing muscles and you want to be able to have sleeve popping guns and you want to have a chest that your partner can use as a pillow. I don't know what your dreams are. And abs as well, but abs are built in a completely different way. Now, do not forget, these are relatively small muscle groups compared to something like your lats or your legs, for example. So if what you're actually trying to achieve is somebody looking at you and going, that guy is really jacked, then you should work everything. And I totally understand this. I didn't work legs very hard when I first got in the gym because it hurt and because it sucked. And even today, I'm all like, oh, I don't want to go work legs. It's rubbish. I know some people massively enjoy leg day. I am without doubt the stereotype. But I do it because I know it helps your overall body. So even in a roundabout well, it's going to help your biceps. It's going to help your chest. It's going to help your lifts. It's going to help your core. You're just going to look like a moron. Not even like Johnny Bravo. Everyone says, oh, you look like Johnny Bravo. No, you won't. Johnny Bravo had no legs, but he was pretty symmetrical up top. You're just going to be with some weird chest bicep machine. And I don't even know what that is. So I understand that doing a bench press is more enjoyable than doing a squat. But just figure out ways to make it entertaining for you. Even if it's just doing progressive overload and thinking, well, I did a 50 kilogram squat today. Next week, I'm going to do a 52.5 kilogram squat, 55. You can turn it into a competition with yourself. But I promise you, if you want to come across like a muscular guy, or a girl, whatever, and you want to have that look, you've got to be working anything. And by not doing that, you're actually doing yourself more harm than good. Which brings us to a classic number eight, cardio before lifting. Now you can do this. I would rather that you did cardiovascular exercise, work that heart, most important muscle in the body. But it stands to reason you only have so much energy, right? Just think of it nice and simple. You only have so much energy. And if you use some of that energy to smash 30 minutes of cardio, by the time you get to lifting weights, you're not going to have as much energy because you got rid of some of it running into the distance. Now, the way that I've always done this, and I get that it's hard, you do have to make sacrifices and you do have to push yourself a little bit, is I do cardio in the morning, first thing when I wake up, and then in the evening, the afternoon, I do my weights. I separate them like that. Now, you don't have to do that every single day. That's me. I'm crazy. I'm nuts. Whatever the hell you want to say. You can do cardio three times a week. So if we assume you're taking two days off the gym, 
you can go and do cardio in the evenings on those two days. Another reason why I like to do cardio first thing is because if it gets past 5 p.m., I can't be bothered. It's like, now I'm tired now. I don't want to do it. So if I do get out of the way first thing, it's done. And I don't have to worry about it. But if you're going to the gym, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, on Wednesday, you can have an early morning cardio session and not worry about it. And the weekend, whenever the hell you want, you can go and do whatever it is you want to do cardio wise not a problem you can go boxing you can go mountain climbing you can go bowling you just have to bowl as hard as you possibly can but i just think if you're trying to build muscle and you're having a serious focus on doing that then you're just doing yourself once again a disservice by doing your cardio beforehand there are multiple hours in the day you could even wake up 30 minutes earlier don't get mad at me that was arnold schwarzenegger's advice and that dude was massive so we all believe him number seven ties into number six but we'll start with number seven because that's how numbers work short rest times and i suppose in this instance we do have to talk about number six too because that's long rest times and the reason i think this has become a massive problem in the fitness community at the fitness palace of love is because everybody argues about it. Some people that you say you have to have short rest times because it keeps your heartbeat up and therefore you're going to be having a better cardiovascular session, I suppose. But for me, I think if you want to do cardio, do cardio. And if you want to do weights, do weights. And of course, if you leave it too long, you're just wasting time. There is, well, I was going to say, there is a, a sweet spot somewhere in the middle. But moving that aside, it's going to differ day to day, session to session, training to training, because of course it is. Sometimes you're going to feel buzzed and you're going to feel jazzed. Maybe that pre-workout has kicked in. So you will be able to pull off shorter rest times and still be able to get to the rep range you want to. Don't forget, every set you should be hitting your rep range. That's how you know how long you need to rest. But of course, you don't want to leave it so long that your muscles are basically calmed down and you've lost any momentum because that sucks too. So go with how you feel. This is the real problem of people being on their phones. One of the good reasons about leaving the phone out of it, even though I think it's perfectly fine in 2022, is you kind of disconnect from how you're feeling. Whereas if you put the phone down, you finish a set where you've really pushed it, you've got all that lactic acid and you can feel the pump. If you actually just sit there for a bit, you do kind of get this mental ping, didn't need to click, <laughs> when it's time to do another set. And sometimes you get distracted by your phone. And of course, that happens the other way too. You can be on your phone and realize, oh no, I've, I've gone too long. So don't say I'm going to rest for two minutes. Don't say I'm going to rest for 60 seconds, 90 seconds. And it's going to differ per exercise anyway. You should be taking much longer rest sets after squats than bicep curls. Because we've already talked about that. Legs are massive. Biceps aren't as massive. So they're going to recover quicker. So do not fall into this trap of thinking that has to be a very specific number that you're using in order when to do another set. Make sure you know what you do doing, plan out your sets, plan out your rep ranges. And if you get to set two and in set one you did eight to 10 and in set two you're lifting the same weight and you do six to eight, Yes, it could be fatigue, and yes, it could be muscle breakdown, but I'd also hazard a guess that maybe you just need to give it a bit longer, and it's the same the other way. And look, you're gonna get caught out every now and then anyway. The toilet, for example. The amount of times I've been lifting, and the body goes, Simon, you need to go do, you know, that kind of bathroom break, and you just have to go and do it. So take everything in your stride, but do not try to come up with anything exact or accurate because it's nonsense. Which brings us to number five, which I suppose ties in, and that's relying on soreness. Because we all want DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. It feels good, and it's a good way to tell you, oh wow, I did something in the muscle because it's hurting right now, but it actually means nothing. You can achieve DOMS in every single one of your sessions, and it could mean that you're growing, and it could mean that you're progressive and evolving, but it also could mean you just hurt the muscle a little bit, because of course when we do lift, we're breaking the muscle apart. But it is not a 100% signifier that you have achieved what you've gone to the gym to do, which is muscle synthesis, blah, blah, boring, boring. We know what we're talking about. Hypertrophy, hypertrophy, roughy, whatever the hell it may be. Let's call it a hypertrophy because everybody wants to win some kind of award. So aim for it if you like it. Be proud of it if you wake up the next day, but make sure you're relying on other factors too. Look at the scales. Measure your muscles. That's a good one to do it. Look in the mirror. Not a singular one of these is going to be enough to tell you that you are heading in the right direction. But if you take all of them, so you are getting DOMS, you think you look a bit leaner, a bit more jacked in the mirror, you've got the measurements saying you're going up, and of course you're documenting all your training, so you think, oh wow, last week I did that 50 kilogram squat, now I'm up to 60, you have enough information to actually put it down as if it was some kind of thesis. Look at it that, look at it like a project. You don't just go and get one person's information or one person's data and go, oh man, I'm going to write this thesis. No, you get many, many different ones from many, many different people and many, many different walks of life. And that's what you got to do with the gym as well. You can strip off and show a friend once a week. I mean, that sounds weird and don't do it in a dodgy way, but that's essentially what we do with personal trainers. I know I've had them. It's very embarrassing. Moving on to number four, two, chasing the pump. 
because of course we want the pump. That's why people guzzle pre-workout because they want to stand in the gym and be like, duh, 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 I'm the man and some weird Star Wars music ripoff. But this ties into the Dom situation. Just because you leave the gym feeling mega pumped doesn't mean you've actually broken the muscle down. Think about when you just do 20 to, 20 to 30 press-ups on the floor. You can look in the mirror, maybe your bicep veins look a little bit better, maybe your chest is popping a bit more, but there ain't no way that you've broken the muscle down enough to, you know, activate it into growth. So if you are leaving the gym and you're not feeling spent and you don't feel like you've been very intense, but you look pumped, that's all you have, which is the pump. Now, I'm going to flip side reverse this. If that's what you do want to train for, you don't care about anything but the pump because it's Friday night and you're going out with the boys, good for you. I don't think that makes you a good or bad person. You're allowed to set your goals and you're allowed to get them. But just because you walk out twice the size, it doesn't mean you're growing. And we all know what happens with the gym pump anyway. You have it for like 30 minutes. Not even that. You leave the gym feeling pretty good and going, there's my guy, did it again. Then you get home, you're like, why have I transformed into someone else? So the pump is just uh, asterisks next to everything else. It's a nice aside, but ultimately it means nothing. And number three comes down to form and not allowing yourself to cheat. I got into this with somebody the other day because I was doing hammer curls. That, of course, is when you get the, the dumbbell and you basically do that like you're hammering on the floor. I mean, don't do it like that. You'll break your elbow. And when I get to the last few uh, reps of my hammer curls, it's the perfect exercise to do a little bit of a swing. Because look, look how much space I can do. Now, you don't want to do that for your entire set because you're not going to be focusing on the muscle properly and form and time under tension are massively important. But if you get to 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 reps and you think, actually, if I do a bit of a swing carefully, in don't injure yourself, don't do it with crazy heavy weight, why wouldn't you want to get a few more out? And in fact, you can find plans out there by very reputable folk that actually will have in cheat hammer curls. So they're happy for you to do it the entire time because if you get to this position and you squeeze You're gonna smash your forearms and you're gonna smash your biceps case in point is though someone came up and said Oh, no, you shouldn't be doing that because form and etc. And they did have a point But you can't be don't fall into this trap and I, I say it all the time form 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 It's like some it's like some strange receptionist like fill in the form I don't mean like that but range of motion all of that I talk about it all the time But you have to ensure that you can be lenient with this stuff on the right occasions, that being one of them. I mean, you could potentially do it with something like squats. Like if you go down and think, oh, I'm not gonna be able to go all the way down to parallel, and you just smash some mini ones out after you've done the proper ones, this would also be fine. But again, that's a more dangerous exercise. But when you more, are more isolating with stuff like your arms or your shoulders or your chest or your back, if you think there's a way to kind of use your momentum and use your body to get past how many reps you were going to do anyway to the point you're cheating on your form, that is perfectly cool. And I do understand the first time you go into the gym, you think you have to be like a robot. Oh no, eight to 10 reps. Da, 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 da. That's a great attitude to have. Just don't let it be all encompassing because it can be those last few reps where you actually do see growth. You've taken it to your natural ability it's not the right word but you've taken it to the natural level and then you're just kind of shunting it over the line using techniques such as this again it's just that one two percent it's what supplements are good for do you need any kind of supplement no but if you're looking for that extra one two percent then they're pretty good number two is a personal one of mine as well and that's the fact that you don't want stability and i can't understand this be it a muso buso ball or whatever it's called or standing on some kind of plate or just standing on a dumbbell you don't want to be unstable when you're doing any kind of a lift. And I understand you're going to say, but Simon, I'm trying to work my core. There's loads of ways <laughs> for you to work your core. As far as I'm concerned, as soon as you do, do any kind of exercise on an unstable platform, you're risking injury. You're more than likely not going to be hitting the muscle you're trying to be hitting because you've got to try and put all your damn energy and all your damn focus into balancing. And I just think it's really stupid. I, I just do. Do you ever climb a ladder and say to your mate, I'll wiggle it as much as possible? No, you say, hold on to it for your dear life because I don't want to fall off and die. It's the same with squats or it's the same with anything like that. Like you see people doing it with squats, but you never see people doing it with deadlifts, although I bet it is out there. The point is this, unless you want to be in one of my idiotic gym fail reaction videos, exclusive to Patreon now because YouTube screwed me over, link in description, that's a cheap plug. I don't think this is going to help you at all. And I actually think you're going to get more gains and you get more process by just keeping it as simple and basic as possible. Stand, stand on the floor and plant your damn feet. And my favorite is at number one, you are constantly changing your lifts because you think you need to be a varied individual, which is good in many walks of life. And you do have to do it in the gym down the line, but not every single week. 
if you are doing a bench press, do a bench press for a long as time. Get better at the bench press because that's something you can follow. You did 10 kilograms, now you're doing 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. If you're doing bench press, and then you're doing dumbbell press, and then you're doing an incline press, whatever it may be, like you can incorporate all of these into your chest session, of course, but I'm talking about the people that say, right, chest today, I'm doing bench. Next week, I'm doing that. Next week, I'm doing that. You're never gonna get any kind of a flow, and you're never gonna get any kind of, ironically, stability with it, because you do not know if you are improving at that lift. Do not forget, if you are improving with the lift, if you are getting stronger, of course, it could mean fat because that is going to help you lift more, but it also is probably going to mean some muscle as well. So stick to things. Give things at least eight to 12 weeks. And if you get to the end of that three month period and you really think to yourself, you know what, I'm not seeing the growth or the reaction I wanted to, then you can start incorporating different things. Now, I'm not saying that you just do bench press all the time, but you see so many people do it for a week and go, no, it's not working for me. I don't look like Rambo. <laughs> So I'm just going to give it up. Patience is a virtue in the gym. And yes, like I've said, you've got to be intelligent. You've got to be smart. You've got to be on the ball in the sense that if you know that you kind of hit a plateau, that's when you need to bring these shifts in, but not beforehand. Some people do programs for two to three years because they are documenting everything and they are just going up and up and up those little notches every day, every week, every month, every year. And that's what it's important. Ultimately, it doesn't matter what you do. As long as you are getting to where you want to go and you're achieving your goals, you are doing it right. But hopefully you can take, take some of these and it'll just make you a little bit smarter, a little bit better. And again, allow you to look at the mirror and go, bam, I'm the greatest person in the world. Don't do that. That's a very slippery slope and you're going to be a sad panda. Now, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the bell ding ding so you know other videos are going live. There will be a video on the screen. Please do give it a click. Otherwise, grillamind.com forward slash Simon. You've got time to get 10% off. These are the supplements I use. I like them. And Instagram at SimonMeta316. That was gibberish. Instagram and Twitter at SimonMeta316. Patreon.com forward slash Simon316 for videos. There's Cameo. There's merchandise. Check out the link in the description below for all the information. But more importantly, thank you for joining me today. Go and kick ass in the gym, whether you've been doing it for a week, whether you're doing it for 10 years. It never gets old. It's the greatest thing in the world. See you soon.